Come to see how we're getting on. We've made good progress since we took back Alamigo, but there's one big issue we still have to address. Leadership. The Domans had Lord Hien ready and willing to take the throne, but we've got no one like that here. Theodoric was our last ruler, and he wasn't called the Mad King for nothing. <sighs> Suffice it to say, our people have had their fill of kings, which means we need to find a new way forward. If only it were that easy. Everyone and his uncle has an opinion. For the time being, we're just going to have to keep leaning on General Aldin and the Alliance for support, and see if we can't find a solution together. Something tells me we're going to be hosting a lot of meetings in the near future. But if that's what it takes, I'm ready to talk till my jaw aches. The reach is yours, Nago. Don't do anything I wouldn't. Aye, aye, Commander. Ah, there you are. I've been searching all over for you. Now, don't worry, it's nothing bad. That said, this might not be the best place to talk. Will you join me? I'll get to the point. Might you be interested in a spot of adventure? After all, we were adventurous before we were scions, were we not? After routing the Imperials and liberating El Amigo, I reckon we've earned a bit of respite, don't you? And what better way to spend it than by returning to our roots? So, what say you? Shall we call on Alphino and go adventuring? Are you all right? Aye. Aye. Everything's still attached. Ah. It seems both our paths led here. Very good. We spent altogether too much time fleeing fiends horrid and numerous. How fared you? Much the same, then. Twould appear this place is yet inhabited by King Theodoric's kin, or what is left of them. The work of terrible magics, I fear. Terrible, aye. But their misfortune is our... fortune? Quite. By the Twelve, there is even more than I imagined. I can't wait to see the look on Lisa's face. Thanks for believing in me, you two. Step back, all of you! Like hells we will! We know who you've got in there! We're not leaving till you hand her over! Bring her out! Bring her out! What's going on? Someone let slip about Fedora. It's true then! 
The bitch really is in there. I knew it. I bloody knew it. We demand vengeance. Bring her out. Today we butcher the butcher. Butcher the... Come on, you don't mean that. We'd be no better than the Imperials if you'd all just calm down. Calm down! That monster and her thrice damned skulls dragged my man from our home and beat him to death in the street! Aye, and my dad! That bitch has spilt enough blood to fill a lock! We all know her crimes. She's a traitor and a murderer. How many of your resistance friends have died at her hands, eh? And here you are, protecting her! So that's what all the fuss is about. Hearken to me, brothers and sisters of Alamigo. Hey, who's this? That... That's the bull of Alamigo. My friends, you are not alone in your anger, your grief, your despair, for it is mine as well. That gnawing pain in your breast, it is enough to bring an old bull to his knees. But I ask you, brothers and sisters, to think not only of the family and friends who were cut down before your very eyes, but to think also of the ones who were abducted, the ones who may yet live. Where were they taken? What became of them? These questions demand answers. I share your thirst for justice, for vengeance. But we will gain only fleeting satisfaction if we give in to our base appetite. We will never know the truth. Now is the time that we, the people of Alamigo, must decide what manner of nation we will build for ourselves and for generations yet unborn. When they look to our example, will they see a people who held fast to their principles or one who cast them aside when tried? I say to you, it is our responsibility to give these prisoners a fair trial that they might answer to all of Alamigo. The Galleons called us savages, and I'll be damned if we prove them right. I know you're right, I do, but I can't. Well, well, well. So many visitors. Come to have a good laugh, have you? Or do you mean to put me out of my misery? To finish what you started? It's about bloody time. That's not why we're here, no. Do you remember what I said? 
How I promised you you'd live long enough to see us win our freedom. Well, I meant it. And not to mock you either. You're wasting your time. All of this is pointless! There's no reason to keep me alive, and you know it! I killed your men. I killed my men. And you know what my only regret is? That I didn't kill you when I had the chance! That's a lie, and you know it! You think we can't tell what you're trying to do? That we're blind? Now, you're a fool, but you're not stupid. You're ruthless. Relentless. You'd give up anything and everything to get what you want. You didn't come this far, climbing over the bodies of your own brothers and sisters just to piss it all away! I see you, Fedora. I see you for what you are. Fadola, we mustn't be late. The Imperial Viceroy will be attending today's banquet. All right! Father, what's Lord Gaius like? Is he nice? Are you friends? There you go again with all your questions. Lord Gaius is a great and honourable man who looks after all of Alamigo. He's very busy, and if we don't hurry, we'll miss our chance to see him. Filthy tinhead lovers. The little tin head lover doesn't know what she is, eh? A traitor, sweetheart. A backstabbing bitch who gladly betray her kith and kin to gnaw on what few scraps the Imperials deign to toss her. Like your bastard father and whore mother. That's not true! My parents are good people! They've never done anything like that! Oh, but they were quick to help themselves and their bitch spawn, weren't they? You're just as guilty as them! Fadola! Traitors! Please! You have to do something! My husband and daughter are in danger! Soldiers of the Imperial Army are under no obligation to intervene in the disputes of Arn. We're citizens! We have rights! I'm scared. It's all right. It's all right. They don't understand, but they'll see in time. They'll see that this is the only way to survive. Traitors! Traitors! Ah! <laughs> 
Oh, let the savages have their fun. They'll be more compliant once they've tired themselves out. Fadola, please! You already have citizenship! Why would you want to become a soldier? Oh, gods! What have you done to your face? Forgotten it already, have you? I'm honouring Father's memory. By telling the world that you know better than a common savage. Am I though, Mother? Are any of us? Can't you see? Citizenship means nothing to them. If you're not a pure blood Galleon, you're no different from any other savage. So I'll play the part. I'll join the Legion and I'll make them respect me. And when the mob see that, they'll think twice before throwing their stones. Ansfrid, Rudolf, Emlyn. It's time. It'll be hard. Humiliating. They'll try to break us. Send us crawling back to our own kind, but we won't, no matter what. We'll bleed for them, die for them if we have to. We'll do whatever it takes to be free! So, you mean to play the part one last time, eh? The unrepentant traitor whose death will serve to unite the people? Shut up. You had every chance to kill yourself. Fashion a noose from your clothes. Wait for the guards to leave you alone long enough to slip it over your neck. I said shut up! Oh, but then it would have all been for nothing, wouldn't it? Whatever it takes. That's what you said. Been in my head, have you? Had a little peek at my past. And what? A few stolen memories tell you everything you need to know, do they? Don't you dare patronize me! You don't know a god's damned thing about the life I've led! The bastards that killed him. The bastards that let it happen. My father deserved better! I swore I'd do whatever it took to make them pay! for anyone. 
The things they've done to you, the lies, the betrayal, the endless fighting. Yet there you stand, unbroken. How? Why? Damn you. Damn you all. You still have time, Fordola. Think about how you want to spend it. Let's go. I thank you for answering my summons in these most interesting times. You have been busy. The liberation of Alamigo will have far-reaching consequences, and there is a matter upon which I would seek your counsel. I speak of Rauban and his future. know the tale of his rise from penniless refugee to member of the Syndicate and General of the Immortal Flames. Yet though he has come to call Uldar home, it will never be his homeland. He is a son of Alamigo. And now that she is free, I thought it only a matter of time before he sought my leave to return to her. Indeed, I had resigned myself to his loss. Suffice it to say, I was greatly surprised to hear him speak so lightly of handing over the reins in Alamigo and retaking his place at my side. I will welcome him with open arms, of course. He is my most trusted advisor and my dearest friend. But I have known the man a long time, and beneath that steely gaze, I spied a flicker of doubt. Whether Rauban chooses to remain in Uldar or return to Alamigo, I only wish that he do so with a heart unburdened by guilt or regret. Yet how can he freely make such a choice, knowing how much I depend on him? It is past time that I learned to discharge my duties as a Sultana alone. I must go forth and see my realm with my own eyes, and hear the wind with my own ears. Might I have your company for a brief adventure? Wonderful! Allow me a moment to change into something a touch less conspicuous, and I will join you outside.
Your Grace, you mustn't! The danger is too great! Please, Your Grace, come back! I beg of you! It seems you're the one who needs looking after, Master Shelf. <laughs> Grab on! Your Grace! I have kept the promise made. So you have. And in turn, so too shall I keep mine. With your winnings, you have become one of the six most wealthy souls in all Ulda. And so, as tradition dictates, Rauben Aldin, you have earned yourself a seat on the Syndicate. May your new station garner you still greater glories. I am honored, Your Grace and vow to serve with every fiber of my being from this day till my last. Long live the Sultana, and long live Ulda! A personal summons from the Scions. This must be important business indeed. Though, if it concerns anything so underhand as an assassination, I fear I can be of little help. <laughs> you have made your point. Tis indeed unsettling to find oneself seated across from an impassive mask. There, would this better please your grace? Or should I address you as Lady Lillera? Hmm? Nay, the deception has served its purpose. I am glad to see you found amusement in my little jest, Lord Lollorito, but shall we proceed to the business at hand? By all means. I must say I am most eager to hear your proposal. Simply put, I would aid the refugees camped in Thanalan in their efforts to return to Alamigo. The reparations you paid in the wake of your earlier misdemeanors will be used to fund the endeavor, together with the fortune seized from the late Teleji Adeleji's estate. But this plan is not intended to benefit the displaced alone. I would make of this an investment which shall enrich Uldar and Alamigo both. And who better to consult on matters of profit than the wealthiest man in all of Thanalan? I beseech you then, Lord Lollorito, share with us your mercantile wisdom. Ah, <laughs> t'would seem your grace has matured beyond acts of earnest yet misplaced charity. Pray tell me more. To summarize, in return for facilitating the repatriation of refugees and assisting in the establishment of new industry in Alamigo, you ask that a proportion of all subsequent profits be promised to Uldar. Huh, I am impressed, Your Grace. Tis an elegant solution. Albeit one lacking certain crucial details, specifically which industry and where. How swiftly you identified the weakness in my plan, just as I knew you would. 
Your travels have taken you across the length and breadth of Gear Abania, and you know the land far better than I. Which of the settlements you visited would best provide a home for our refugees? Which has the greatest potential to flourish, given the appropriate investment? Ah, yes, that desolate little village on the shore of Loch Seld. I know the salt tree and its products well. The Imperial invasion brought an end to their more widespread distribution. Much to the dismay of many a wealthy gourmand, myself included. Salt has ever been a transformative ingredient. And in this instance, I dare say, it could transform a modicum of effort into a mountain of gill. The local citizens will need to be consulted, of course, but I trust the East Aldenar Trading Company can be relied upon to provide its assistance in negotiating a mutually beneficial arrangement. Naturally, Your Grace. I shall dispatch representatives well-versed in the extraction of this white gold and wring every last ounce of profit from its production. The Loch's bounty will contribute to Alamigo's enrichment, whilst easing the burden on the bull's aching shoulders. Just as your grace desired. A deal is struck then. Apologies for the wait. People are screaming for the butcher's blood again. No sooner have we broken up one mob than another forms. Thankfully, all have been amenable to reason, thus far. But it is no concern of yours. We must speak of the men Arenvald and his comrades apprehended in the peaks. By their uniforms, the captives were first judged to be Imperial troops. But after further investigation, their true identities came to light. I dare say you remember Yu Yuhasi and Laurentius, the fugitives who conspired with Captain Ilbert in the Crystal Braves' betrayal. Aye, well, it would seem they followed him all the way to the Wall. It was they who orchestrated the slaughter of the Resistance fighters prior to the Griffin's infernal ritual. Were it in your hands, how would you punish these men? You would spare these animals. Yours is a more merciful brand of justice than mine. In any event, I thank you for your honesty. When the time comes for the Alliance to pass judgment, I'll see that your opinion is heard. Well, that concludes our business here. But there is more I would say. Walk with me. I bear a share of the blame for Ilbert's atrocities. Had I openly supported the cause of Alamegan liberation, he might not have felt driven to do what he did. Things could have been different, and I'm sorry they aren't. But even after all that has happened, my homeland is free. With the Scions and the Alliance at their side, my countrymen have reclaimed what many thought lost forever. 
Under her new leadership, I have every confidence that Alamigo will emerge from the shadow of the Empire and rise once more to greatness. Which means my work here is done. Soon I will return to Uldar and take my place at the Sultana's side. Father... <sighs> I'll not deny there's a part of me that wants to stay. The same part that contemplated renouncing my rank and joining you as a wandering sellsword. But I pledged my blade to Nanamo, and I will not betray that oath. Is this truly what you want, Father? It is. Ever has my sword been hers to command, and ever shall it remain. Thank you for lending an ear. When all the rest are clamoring for me to stay, I trust you'll send me on my way. Thank you all for coming. I am Lise Hext, and I speak for the Resistance. Among you are village elders, refugee leaders, envoys from the Ananta and the Kikern. You've come from every corner of Girabania to help decide the future of Alamigo. But before that, I want to ask you a question. What was the first thing you noticed when you came in? For me, it was that empty throne. It has no one to sit on it now. No Viceroy, no King. Would any of you like to take their place? Or should someone else sit there? Then let's sit here in a circle, as equals, and I hope, as friends. Expertly done. Lise has removed monarchy as a choice early in the game and positioned them to consider a joint government. All things considered, I would say events have got off to a fine start. And that is Alagana's stance on the matter. Thank you, Regenfrid. Another vote in favor. Next, let's hear from Shanti of the Kalyana. Tell us, how do your people feel about the idea of a republic? The Ananta wish only that those who dwell within Gia Abania devote themselves. To our faith. You shall all worship Sri Lakshmi. Let
Lady of Bliss, grace us once more with your beauteous visage. No crystals were allowed through the door. We can worry about the how of it later. We need to evacuate these people right now, or the Primal will make thralls of them all. It's up to us. be sorely disappointed. We have the Warrior of Light and Arenvold to shield us. Aye, but they can't well defend your guests and attack the Primal, can they? We're stuck on the back foot. Uh, all right, I think I have an idea. Keep these people safe, General. I'll be back as soon as I can. She's about to best make it quick. Come then. Who will be next to die on my steel? Time before we miss one. <gasps> what of it? Do you want to kill this thing or not?
seven hells. It's her, the butcher. It's done. Take me back to my cell. You are not forgiven. Not you. You, I will never forgive. But I will thank you. For standing against a primal and saving us from servitude. You have my thanks. Fine spot to contemplate the heavens. The meeting is over. The envoys have chosen to instate a government model on Ishgard's House of Commons, a ruling body of representatives elected by the people. It is a fair decision and one which signals the end of my part in all this. But I would gaze upon Girabania's stars one last time before I leave. Forget something. Your Grace, I... there was no word. Rabun Aldin, you are hereby dismissed as General of the Immortal Flames and relieved of your seat on the Syndicate. But... Your Grace... Rabon, I am no longer a child. Stay here in your homeland. Work with your brethren. Rebuild Alamigo. You desire to stand alone. I, I understand, but remember what happened. I remember full well the consequences of my naivety. 
and thus did I consult at length with the most trusted advisor ere I embarked upon this course. A most trusted advisor? And what of me? Am I no longer deserving of your confidence? Trust can there be between us when you withhold the truth from me? Did you think me oblivious to the anguish in your eyes when you spoke of returning to Uldar? For years and years, we have trusted one another, yet now you refuse to confess your heart's desire? I swore an oath to you that day on the sands. I pledged my sword. And it has served me well. But in Pippin you have forged a new sword, as sharp and deadly as the blade you bequeathed him. I will show you a Sultana who can wield every weapon at her disposal, including Lollorito and his monetarist cronies. So follow your heart, please. You are home. You are free. No, no more. I... <sighs> Smile for me, Raubon. I would have this parting be a joyous one. Thank you, Your Grace. It has been an honor to serve you and Ulda. Tomorrow you will serve Alamigo and fight for the good of all Eorzea. Am I understood? Yes, Your Grace. Thanks for shielding us from Lakshmi, you two. If you hadn't been there, the rest of us would be worshipping her by now. You're kind to include me, Lise. But we both know who did most of the work. I could scarce keep track of the battle, let alone land a telling blow. No shame in admitting it. The Warrior of Light has put far better men than me in the shade. Did I mention that I encountered the Sultana in the palace? It would seem her grace has come to Girabania to oversee the final stages of her relocation project. She was in search of General Aldin, and I directed her to the rooftop garden. I do hope he was still there. Are you in the habit of gossiping about the affairs of Royal Tea Master Leveilleur? Certainly not, Your Grace. I, I was merely informing my companions. Beatties, Alphano, it was only a jest. But I must yield the floor to Raubon. He has an important announcement to make. <clears throat> As of yesternight, I have been relieved of my post in the Immortal Flames and the Syndicate both.
I shall be assuming my father's duties. And may I say that Tizona has never felt heavier upon my back. Towards seem I am in need of employment. Mayhap one of my old acquaintances can introduce me to a mercenary company of some such. You may be getting on in years, father, but you'd struggle to find a band of sellswords who wouldn't snap your hand off. Your remaining hand. <laughs> yes, the bull of Alamigo need not be put out to pasture just yet. <laughs> your grace has developed a wicked edge to her humor. And you, Pippin, would do well not to laugh when the future may hold the same for you. So, does this mean you're staying? Aye. That seems to be the way of it. I would be glad to aid you in rebuilding our nation, if you'll have me. He says, Welcome home, Raoban. Well, that was unexpected, though you seem distinctly unsurprised. Either you are more astute than I give you credit for, or I am losing my touch. In any event, one thing is certain. Alamigo will rejoice at the homecoming of her dearest son. Friends, thank you for coming at such short notice. We were told the matter was urgent. I take it Yuguri and Sorobin are also involved? Ah, my presence here is but a happy coincidence. I am come on separate business, which can wait. My apologies. Master Hancock, pray, tell our friends exactly what you told me. Of course, of course. Some few days ago, a large detachment of soldiers was seen arriving at the Garlean Embassy. This seemed to me most unusual, as no personages of note are due to visit for a matter of months. So, I made a few inquiries, whereupon I learned of a most curious rumour. Apparently, the soldiers were dispatched to Kugane to investigate recent sightings of a certain individual. The late acting Imperial Viceroy of Doma, Yotsuyu. I beg your pardon? I too am loath to believe it. I saw the keep come down on top of her. We all did. I would not presume to question your eyewitness accounts, nor am I one to take rumours at face value. The fact is, the Garleans have no knowledge of what took place at Dorma Castle. They may well be chasing after a woman who merely resembles Yotsuyu. But a woman who resembles Yotsuyu in the company of a grizzled Rogadan samurai? I dare say that thickens the plot. Gosetsu! He's alive! 
While I've no conclusive proof, I thought that such a possibility warranted your attention. Have you informed Lord Heian? Well, I think we'd all like to believe the old bear survived. Indeed. While I dare not give myself wholly to hope, I will not deny that I have prayed for such a miracle ever since that fateful day. But regardless of my personal feelings, if the Empire has seen fit to pursue these rumors so vigorously, we can scarce afford to ignore them. I am bound by duty to ascertain the truth of the matter. Will you join me in this quest? Thank you. If Gorsetsu yet lives, he will need our help if he is to avoid capture. Gorsetsu is a dear friend, and we cannot abandon him to the mercy of the Empire. Our course is clear. Hancock, is there aught else you can tell us? Alas, not. But... I have taken the liberty of employing one of the finest informants money can buy. You shall have the latest intelligence on the Garleans' movements and more besides. Lady Yotsuyu, we're here to rescue you. Please, come with us. Stay back, Tsuyu. <coughs> Are you all right? Is he all right? Gozetsu! Damn it, we took too long. Change of plan, eliminate hostiles! All forces, attack! My apologies. Our deliberations took longer than expected. Think nothing of it. The time afforded me the opportunity to go on a rather rousing excursion through Yansha. You have reached a decision then? We are willing to cooperate with you in combating the Icon threat and also in the exchange of prisoners. Assuming you accept our conditions, of course. As you know, your sister is in our care. Due to certain complications, however, we are hesitant to release her into your custody. Complications? She was inside Doma Castle when it collapsed. Though she survived, she remembers nothing of her past life, not even her name. To clarify, she is in our care not as a prisoner, but as a vulnerable citizen of Doma. Are you saying you refuse to release her? Not at all, if her memory returns before the appointed hour. And if not, what exactly? You will accommodate her here in Doma? Well, I sincerely doubt she will be of any great strategic value to the Empire. She spends her days daydreaming of Dango. Dango? How dreadful.
Very well. In light of our recent misstep in Sakazuki, it seems only fair that I show you the same understanding you have shown us. Though I do have one small request. Regardless of Yotsuyu's value to the Empire, she is yet my sister. Before I leave, might you permit me to speak with her in private? Of course. Perhaps you could even bring her a plate of dango. She would be most pleased. Yugiri will see you to her chambers. I wish you a safe journey. This has been a most enjoyable visit. I look forward to our next meeting. Maxima, would you take the others and see that all is ready for our departure? I simply cannot leave without first giving thanks to the Warrior of Light for accompanying me through Yansha. Mark me. Saviour of the savages, there will be a reckoning. to run, traitor! Ignorant savages! Killing us will avail you naught! For every Imperial you cut down, a thousand more will come. Abandon this foolish endeavor and surrender! You may yet serve our righteous cause. How dare you speak of righteousness? You who forsook kith and kin to serve conquerors! Be glad I grant you this mercy. Reinforcements? No, just one! Cut him down!
Thank you. Thank you, sir. This one is promising. Who remains to offer us resistance? A host of rebels led by Lord Cayenne hold the enclave across the river. Lord Cayenne. The king of the... the former king of Dorma, sir. They say he is one of the greatest swordsmen alive. Is that what they say? Surely you jest. That was Zenos Ye Galvas, Legatus of the Twelfth, the Crown Bloody Prince. I heard he was strong, but that... that was frightening. That was... Lord Zenos. Everything you are, your power, even your face, it vexes me. Go on. Lash out like the beast you are at an emissary and jeopardize the newfound peace between Dorma and the Empire. My lord was destined to lead us unto a glorious new age. Your light is nothing to his radiance. I will cherish this moment, lock it away within my heart. Until the day we meet again. You look troubled, my friend. Was it something he said? Of all the memories to witness. I had my doubts about him, but I would never have guessed he was a disciple of Zenos. My lord. Calm yourself, you giddy. I set no store by him or his enlightened brethren. But if by treating with them there is even the faintest hope we might secure the return of our conscripted brothers and sisters, I must play this game. After the way I risked their lives in the rebellion, I owe them that much. My lord, you bear no blame for their fate. If not blame, then responsibility. They were prisoners, and still I chose to fight, knowing they could be executed in retaliation. 
But now we have a chance to bring them home. If it means bargaining with a monster, so be it. My lord. Besides, I think he likes me. Which is more than some can say. Can you truly remember nothing? Nothing at all? Were we... friends? Yes! We were good friends, you and I. In fact, I've brought you a gift. I pray that one day soon, as you gaze into that mirror, you will remember the woman staring back at you. It's so pretty. Who are you? Who are you? How are you feeling, my lord? Fine, now leave me. Open wide now. Please to you. I'm not so frail that I cannot feed myself. Ah, I grow weary of the taste of gruel. You don't like it? Can I fetch you something else? Hi, wine! Or if that is not wholesome enough, I don't know. A sweet persimmon from Namai? I enjoyed them in my youth. A persimmon? Nay, pay me no mind. I am full. Besides, we have guests. We are not interrupting your meal. We had heard you were confined to bed and thought you might welcome some visitors. Confined to... a gross exaggeration. A trifle drained from my exertions, perhaps, but with a little rest, I shall be fighting fit again in no time. Take off your clothes. Gosetsu, is this how you've been spending your time? My lady, I assure you, this is not. Off with them. We need to wash you. You stink.
What are all these scars? There are so many of them. A life of battle will leave its mark upon a man. Is something wrong to you? It's nothing. I'm fine. But leave me be, woman! I will not be fussed over like some newborn babe. Greetings. Might I have one of your... Wait! Please! I only wanted a persimmon! Kami, save us! Her spirit has returned! She's back from the dead to seek her revenge! It can't be. She couldn't have survived. What did I... What did I do? As if you don't know! Good people of Namai, be at ease, I pray you. You have naught to fear. My lord, forgive me, but what is that monster doing here? They told us she was dead! I too was surprised to learn of her survival. More even than you, I would hazard. T'was I who cut her down, I who left her to her fate. But it would seem the Kami had other plans. By some miracle, both she and Gosetsu were spared when the keep collapsed, though Yotsugu's preservation came at the cost of her memory. You're saying she's forgotten? Forgotten everything she's done? Lies! Lies! My lord, she would say anything to escape punishment! What does it matter? We have not forgotten her crimes! And we demand justice! I beg of you, Lord Hien, draw your blade and rid us of this canker! What I saw then, it's all true. I'm sorry! I'm so, so sorry! You're sorry? And what? We're supposed to forgive you! Here, there's no need to cry. Can't you see how scared she is? How can you be scared of her? 
She's not the same. Until such time as her memories return, this woman shall be known as Tsuyu and treated as a citizen of Doma. I will, however, see that she is watched at all times. Rest assured that there will be no more unannounced visits to the village. As your lord, I ask that you leave her fate in my hands and suffer her to live for now. Please, Issei. All right. I'll keep my peace. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. What a pleasure it is to see you once more, Lord Hien. Not to mention my dear sister. A pleasure to see you too, Ambassador. Forgive us our late arrival. You have our people aboard the airship? Exactly as agreed. We would leave you in no doubt as to the purity of our intentions. I dare say it was the self-same spirit of cooperation which prompted you to bring Yotsuyu here today. Indeed. Before excluding her from the exchange, I thought it only fair that you see her condition for yourself. Physically, she is in fine health, but her mind is unchanged. So I see. But all need not necessarily be lost. In anticipation of this tragic turn of events, I took the liberty of inviting some special guests. Ah, Yotsuyu. You look... well. <laughs> of all the people... Is something wrong, dear sister? These are our beloved parents. Does not the sight of them bring back sweet childhood memories?
<laughs> it would seem my little surprise was not sufficient. You needn't glare at me so, Lord Hien. I merely did what any loving son would do for his family. Lest you doubt, I am content to leave the acting Viceroy in your care. Pray, treat her as you would any daughter of Dorma. Do not grow too fond of this place, dear sister. You will come back to us ere long. We continue with the exchange as planned, then. Very good. The structure across the river should serve our needs. We shall await you there with the conscripts. If you would bring your captives. Agreed. Until then, Ambassador. Gosetsu, are you awake? My lord, come in, come in! When Tsuyu returned, her eyes were red from weeping. She spoke not a word, simply sat and peeled some fruit she'd brought for me. She then claimed weariness and retired to her chamber. Tell me, what happened to upset her so? The ambassador arranged a surprise reunion with her foster parents. A misguided attempt to restore Yotsuyu to her senses. It was plain their presence caused her great distress, but she seemed otherwise unaffected. Yotsuyu was mistreated as a child, was she not? It was a cruel trick to use her tormentors like that, knowing the pain it could cause. I like this Asahi less and less. Be that as it may, he has agreed to allow Yotsu to remain with us in Dorma. Our primary concern now is to hand over the prisoners without incident and bring our people safely home. There was one other detail at the meeting which caught my attention. I assume you all noticed the rather suspect crates within the castrum. The Imperials were quick to retrieve them afterwards, but I wonder. Out with it, brother. You fear they might contain bombs or war machines? If the Ambassador wanted me dead, he has had ample opportunity. No, assassination is not his intent. But we should be on our guard for other acts of treachery. My lord! Forgive me, but the Lady Yotsuyu! She's gone! Gone?! I beg your pardons, my lords. I was certain she'd fallen asleep. No, no, the responsibility is mine. Twas I who gave her a room instead of a cell. 
She may simply have wandered outside. We will organize search parties. Might I call upon your assistance? I hadn't remembered. He should hate me. But I will not suffer his kindness. Not after what I did to him. here in the dark. This is the Enclave, is it? When the soldiers dragged us back to Doma, you were the last person I expected to see. You're the bane of our existence, Yotsuyu! A font of misery! You couldn't even do us the simple courtesy of dying, could you? Oh, no. You had to live and taint us with the shame of your failure. We had a perfect life in the capital, and now they're making us wallow in this muddy ruin like common swine. I don't deserve this. Now, now, dear, that'll do. There seems little point in berating the girl when she scarcely remembers her own name. Our time would be better spent contemplating how we're to survive this unhappy predicament. <laughs> You've kept your looks at least. I suspect you'd fetch a handsome price with the right buyer. Maybe enough to get us to Kugani and start a new business. <laughs> ah, my beloved parents. No sooner do I wake from gentle slumber than the world returns in all its cruelty. Yes, this is how it always was. How it was meant to be. Very well. If I cannot escape my nature, then I shall embrace it. To the very depths I have sunk, my soul steeped in spite and rotten to the core. The self-righteous hide behind 
justice, but I need no such mask. Father, mother, was it not you who made me into this monster? Who taught me the truth of this miserable world? For years I knew naught but the taste of pain and humiliation. But the time has come to savor my vengeance against Dorma. Against all my enemies. And it begins... With you! Y Yatsuyu! <laughs> Well done, dear sister. Did I not say you would come back to us? Brother dearest, what a surprise. You always were a cold-blooded little worm. I doubt you thought twice about sending our parents to their deaths. Your dagger yet drips with their blood and you presume to judge me? To be frank, I didn't think you had the strength to slay them so cleanly. A single thrust each. I'm impressed. But surely you can't be satisfied with murdering a pair of doddering elders. You yearn for a deeper vengeance, and the power to see it through. Any sign of her? What happened here? I knew what would happen if she recovered. And still, I did nothing. You say she left with her brother? Whatever he wants with her, he was willing to pay for it with his parents' lives. But this is neither the time nor the place. We must gather the others. At last, the hour has come. The conclusion to these negotiations will mark a new beginning for Dorma and the Empire. A first step on the road to peaceful coexistence. Indeed. We are ready to proceed with the exchange when you are. <clears throat> Forgive my curiosity, Ambassador, but... Is there a purpose to these containers you bring with you? 
Oh, the supply crates. They are filled with materials we hoped might be of use in Dorma's restoration. I meant to gift them to you at our last meeting, but we had so much else to discuss. How very generous. I confess I had not expected such compassion, welcome though it is. But then I was also surprised by the news that one of our captives had delivered herself into your custody ahead of time. A minor discrepancy I shall overlook in the spirit of the occasion. Are you perhaps referring to me, Lord Hien? Yotsuyu. Orphan of the Nayori, widow of Sashihai, and acting viceroy of Dorma! You and your people are mine to govern, mine to punish! Well, well, it would seem your shattered mind is mended. As per our agreement with the Ambassador, you are free to return with him to the Empire. Your authority as Acting Viceroy, however, is no longer recognized here. <laughs> My position is not for you to decide. Little Lordling. All who resist the rule of the Empire must be purged. Such was the order given to me by Lord Zenos himself. I will reign here in this putrid pestilent swamp until the last of you has been broken. This land shall know no dawn. I will spew forth darkness and drown all in eternal night. And high above you I shall shine, uncaring, cold and distant as the moon! What has she done? Oh gods, this is a summoning. A dormant citizen has called forth an icon in direct violation of our primary agreement. The negotiations have failed. Abandon the captives and make preparations to withdraw. But Ambassador... Disobey me, Pylos, and you disobey the Emperor. 
Make preparations to withdraw! Now! As you command. My lord, you must fall back! You ask me to run? Spare my pride, would you? I know this foe is beyond me. The field is yours. We will withdraw, but not without our countrymen. I want every soul accounted for. Every soul! My lord. I knew you would not flee. I see now the strength which flows from that baleful light. Goddess of the moon and divinity of night. What power can compare to such celestial majesty? I shall plunge all I despise into darkness! And within that black abyss, even your light shall flicker and fade. Come, let us cast the stalks and look upon the fate of Dorma. I see a future in which the sun sets on this wretched land. Once and for all! You really must learn to finish the job. Tis true that a gaudy mirror and a handful of crystals make for a feeble summoning. But even the weakest icon is a god of sorts. A threat that must be put down. My, my! Such hostility! These beings are the sworn enemies of the Empire. I merely did my duty as an Imperial officer. Will you surrender to anger then? Slay an anointed emissary to avenge a fallen foe? You cannot, of course. To do so would burn the bridges we have labored so hard to build. Oh, but I'm forgetting. They're already ash. This doorman woman has seen to that. The Empire cannot ally itself with any nation that refuses to renounce summoning. I believe I was most clear on that point. It 
should have been mine. The power he bestowed upon her. I should have been the one to govern Dorma. I would have repaid his faith. No one alive loves him more than I. Instead, this harlot betrayed his trust. Useless piece of filth! Worthless whore! Thank you, dear brother, for this precious gift. Vengeance. These people, our people, they ignore the corruption which festers beneath the surface. Cast aside that which is dirty and broken. Speak not of things which would disrupt their dreary little lives. Like you, Asahi. Always pretending not to see. You were the first. The first I swore to kill. my hunger insatiable. But now, now I am satisfied. You should feel honored, dear brother. I saved the last of my strength. Just for you. What's the matter? The Witch of Dorma will soon be dead. Her happiness was never to be. Not in this world. I wonder, was the fruit as sweet as he remembered? Lord Zenos. I am 
at your disposal. Asai, you were born of Doma, yes? Yes, my lord. I am honored that you would remember me. How may I serve? You are hereby appointed Ambassador Plenipotentiary and empowered to speak with the voice of the Emperor. Return to your native land of Doma and announce your intention to sue for peace. For peace? Once negotiations are underway, you are to locate the acting Viceroy. She lives? Uh, that is to say, I will, my lord. When you have found her, you will initiate a ritual to call forth an icon. I will instruct you in the necessary steps. Yotsuyu's faith is unreliable. But as a child raised to believe in the kami, she will serve as a vessel for one of the Kojin's gods. She need only wish it to be so. The power will seem a gift, but the icon's essence will consume her. She will be no more than a husk, a slave to whim and desire. My lord, ever since the day you saw fit to save my miserable life, I have dreamed of repaying your benevolence. Upon my honor, I swear to devote myself wholly to your service. All that you command will be done, no matter the cost. But, but, I fear the subtleties of your plan yet elude me. From the reports I have heard, the champion who aids the Dolmen resistance would make short work of a single icon. The icon is merely a message. The pacifist teachings of the popularis spread through this city like a plague. And I would remind the people of the threat we face. You will be my chosen agent. The hand which tolls the warning bell. The salvation of this world will not be won through the signing of treaties. Your chosen agent. I will not fail you, my lord. My master, <laughs> Lord Xenos, he will come for you. <laughs> you have prevailed, I see. She is gone? Wherefore did the Kami spare us only to inflict this pain?
Death shall not want for company this day. You spared us a worse disaster, but I fear our fledgling peace with the Empire was beyond saving. Lord Hian! Maxima, is it not? I assumed you long fled. I entertain thoughts of escape even now. But our negotiations have yet to reach a satisfying conclusion. The Ambassador insisted that the summoning spelled an end to our mission here. But it seemed to me there was more to the tale. I have heard tell of this power you wield. And in your vision, you witnessed Lord Xenos giving these orders. But how can that be? Xenos is dead. He took his own life after the battle in Alamigo. I saw his body with my own eyes. Forgive me, but Lord Xenos is very much alive. He granted our party an audience prior to our departure. That he was gravely wounded is certain, but his recovery appeared to be proceeding apace. I'm afraid I share Lord Hien's confusion. The man's death was confirmed and his remains interred. These are matters of public record. Hmm. I have no doubt you believe what you say. But what then is the explanation? That an imposter has infiltrated the innermost circle of the Imperial Court? The idea is inconceivable, absurd. But worthy of investigation nonetheless. Our movement can ill afford to have a highly placed pretender undermining our efforts. Your efforts may yet bear fruit. Tell me, what is to become of our prisoner exchange? Though we have already taken custody of our conscripts, we have yet to release your Imperial comrades. Do you still intend to collect them? Ah, uh, uh, yes. As the late Ambassador's second in command, it falls to me to speak on the Empire's behalf. And I'm happy to confirm our intent to proceed according to the original agreement. Then let us be about it. It would be a pity to abandon such a promising beginning. Indeed. You have my thanks, Lord Hien. As soon as our people are secure aboard our airship, we shall depart straightways for Garlemald. Tread lightly, Pylos. I sense treachery awaits you there. Might I accompany you to the capital? Alphano, have you gone mad? Imposter or no, if Xenos was instructing Asahi on the finer points of ritual summoning, then experience tells us there is an Asian waiting in the wings. Without our knowledge and expertise, our new friends will be hard pressed to contend with a foe for whom death is but a minor inconvenience. They need our help. Were you indeed willing to share your knowledge of this enemy, we would not shun your counsel. You truly mean to do this? In full knowledge of the danger? I have seen the Warrior of Light risk her life on countless occasions. Next to her, I'm scarce more than a distraction on the battlefield. But in the meeting room or the audience chamber, there I can make a difference. I can strike bargains, forge ties, and change minds. And where better to do these things than in the home of our old enemy? Tis not for me to stop you, but I would have you consider an alternative arrangement. Rather than braving the Empire as a simple traveller, go forth as an emissary of Dorma. Such a position should offer you some measure of protection. Go then. You've obviously made up your mind. 
Just try not to do anything reckless, all right? I shall be on my best behaviour. Farewell, my friends. How often have I imagined this moment? Thank you for helping it come to pass. There you are. Gosetsu, your hair. My friend, what have you done? An old man who cannot raise his blade has no place in the service of a young lord. Thus did I decide to devote my remaining days to pilgrimage. I will walk this land, offering prayers of repose for all the souls who left this life in suffering. All of them? <laughs> A fulsome farewell makes for an enjoyable journey. Scarcely have we said our goodbyes to Alphano and you leave us too. <sighs> but, tis well that my companions find their own way forward I must endeavor to do the same. I have faith that you will find the best path for Dorma without me, my lord. Pray forgive me this last act of selfishness, and grant me your blessing. You have earned it a thousand times over. Go in peace, my friend. I shall make of Doma a land where children laugh, and none need live in fear.
There is no better way to honor those who went before. And with that, I take my leave. Oh dear, we seem to be missing a corpse. Well, it must be somewhere. I only hope it isn't walking around. God, I needed that. I won't bother telling you to catch your breath. Whatever brought you galloping back to us, I assume it's urgent. Quite. Without further ado, then. After the successful uprisings in Doma and Alamigo, rebels in several other provinces were inspired to follow suit. Unfortunately, they did not fare quite so well. The Dalmascans paid the heaviest price. For their defiance, the Emperor made a show of raising their capital to the ground, prompting many of their neighbors to abandon thoughts of resistance. But not all have given up on liberty. Heartened by the news of Doma's prisoner exchange, some still believe that the Empire may one day be amenable to negotiation. We have the Shinobi to thank for spreading the good word. They have worked tirelessly to keep the subjugated informed, and a little knowledge can go a long way. There is at least a spark of hope then. A spark in want of kindling, yes. The Alliance has already begun supplying materiel to resistance movements abroad, many of whom would otherwise struggle to continue the fight. The support effort has been led by the Sultana and the Elder Seedseer, who have both seen enough Alamegan refugees to know the consequences of oppression. And for their troubles, they have quickly earned a reputation as folk heroes in certain corners of the Empire. That is all for the provinces. As for the Garlean motherland itself. Our friends, the Popularis, have suffered something of a setback, I regret to say. Talk is rife that Doma has summoned a primal, and the Empire's more liberal voices are being drowned out in the fearful clamor for retribution. And who do they think orchestrated this summoning? Oh. <laughs> any but those truly responsible. Xenos has seen to that. Speaking of whom, the Crown Prince is recovering remarkably well. Well enough, in fact, to enable him to personally tour the provinces, putting the fear of the Emperor into the hearts of any would-be dissidents. He walks in plain sight, and none suspect him. Then it's as we feared. Yes. 
and Assian wears his skin. But it was not that which brought me here in such haste. During my time in the provinces, I learned many things. Yet at no point did I hear any report of a Doman emissary in the capital. But Alvano should have arrived by now. Could they be holding in there in secret? The possibility did cross my mind, but I have reason to believe he never reached his destination. As you know, scions assigned to covert operations such as Riol and myself are issued special link pearls for communication in the event of an emergency. I mention this because it was originally Alfino's task to coordinate the response at headquarters, meaning he has one. And whose voice should I hear when mine recently crackled to life? You spoke with Alfano? Spoke with? No. I but heard his voice, and none too clearly at that. Two words were all I could make out. The burn. The wasteland on the edge of Othard. Something must have happened to them there. There's no time to waste. We must make for the burn at once. I had a feeling you might say that. And? I can't very well sit around here drinking tea if Alphano's in trouble. You said yourself that this link pill was only to be used in emergencies. So I'm going, and that's the end of it. Oh, far be it from me to change your minds. Ah, there you are. Between contending with bloodthirsty beasts and sand in my every conceivable place, I had begun to despair of finding you again. Do you recognize the crashed ship over yonder? Mistress Alizé and I briefly inspected it. It is the vessel that bore Master Alphino away. But there was no sign of him, nor of Maxima and his people. War Machina. It would seem they were involved in a struggle. There may be clues. We should split up and search the area. These were no ordinary soldiers. Over here! The insignia on this man's uniform identifies him as one of the Emperor's personal guard. Hand-picked soldiers, answering only to the royal family. That would explain why all the casualties are Garlean. They were fighting their own. You're saying the Emperor was behind all this? That Alphano is his prisoner?
Aye, we must not jump to conclusions. Besides, Alphino is more than capable of looking after himself, is he not? I suggest we return to Doma to consider our options. Whatever happened here, Master Alphino is long gone, and any subsequent search may safely be left in the hands of the Shinobi. Where in the world are you, brother? If you die on me, I will never let you hear the end of it. Lise! What brings you here? Oh, Alliance business. We have a request for Doma. Well, Hian. But that can wait. They told me you were out searching for Alphino. Did you manage to pick up his trail? Well, if he wasn't at the crash site, he might still have escaped. We have to keep searching. And we will. Alphino embarked on this journey as an emissary of Dorma, and I hold myself responsible for his safe return. I will have our shinobi in the provinces search for him as a matter of urgency. Chin up, Alize. You'll get to admonish your brother for his recklessness yet. Well, someone has to do it. I'm sure he's going to be fine. There is one thing I'm not sure about, though. You said it was the Emperor's personal guard that attacked Alphino's airship. But the Popularis would never have been able to arrange the prisoner exchange without Varus's blessing. So why would he sabotage his own mission? They may not have been acting on Varus's orders. The guard answer not only to him, but to his family, the Crown Prince included. When Yotsuyu summoned Tsukuyomi, Asahi was quick to proclaim that a dormant citizen had violated the terms of our agreement, that the negotiations had failed. And it is this version of events that is now being repeated across Garlemald. To hear the tale, one would think the prisoner exchange never took place. Plainly, someone is manipulating matters from the shadows, most likely Xenos, or whoever it is that wears his face. Whichever Asian you mean, we all know the nature of our adversary. The servants of Chaos are true to their name. Their meddling has cost Dorma a chance at peace. Whoever it was that loosed his personal guard, the Emperor cannot be ignorant of these developments. We must proceed on the assumption that our treaty is indeed in tatters. But come, Lys. You have journeyed far. Let me hear your petition. Right. So the big news is that Alamigo has agreed to join the Aeorzean Alliance. To make it official, and discuss where we all go from here, the leaders of the Five Nations are planning to hold a meeting, and we were hoping you might come too. We've already seen what we can achieve when we work together. 
and the Alliance hopes to work even more closely in future. They think it's our best hope of keeping the Garleans in check, and I agree. As do I. By coordinating our efforts in the East and West, we may be able to discourage them from committing their forces to a single front. I accept your invitation. I must, however, ask for time to attend to some pressing matters here. In light of recent events, the risk of Imperial reprisals is greater than ever, and I would not leave Dorma unguarded. Ere I depart, I must shore up her defenses. Understood. I'll let the Alliance know. We'll wait to hear from you before setting a date. The meeting's to be held at the Royal Palace in Alamigo, incidentally. Do you remember the way? Well enough. Please assure my hosts that I will not keep them waiting any longer than I have to. Consider it done. And thank you for agreeing to come. If we all put our heads together, we're sure to find the best way forward. For everyone. If we are to ready ourselves for invasion, we shall need manpower, provisions, and time, all of which are in notably short supply. Candid as ever, you giddy, and correct, I concede. Fortunately, I have an idea. Tis plain no single nation can stand against the might of the Empire. And it was only with the aid of others that Dorma succeeded in winning her freedom. So, I mean to take a leaf out of our Eorzean friend's book and form an alliance of our own. In addition to those with whom we already share an understanding, I would reach out to Hingashi and Suinosato, and further afield to the myriad peoples of Nangsha and Dalmaska. I am under no illusion. Not all will answer the call. Yet disparate though we may be, we are united in our desire for freedom. If our neighbors could be made to see what is at stake, Asian machinations and all, cooperation need not be so far-fetched a notion. It may even seem practical. Under the guidance of our former leader, Master Louis Soir, we once strove to unite the fractious city-states of Eorzea. I dare say that experience shall be of use in your endeavor. We should be glad of your wisdom. For the record, I would have been in favor of this plan even if it hadn't been my grandfather's, but I have to ask, how will we secure the time to carry it out? Not that anyone has forgotten, but the Garleans have airships. Lots and lots of airships. Should they catch wind of our plan, they could send an armada to overwhelm us before our alliance had even begun to take shape. Not if we deny them access to the skies. During our time in the burn, the Warrior of Light and I chanced upon some Allegan ruins. Oh? As such ruins go, they were not particularly unusual. But something about the surrounding land struck me as odd. Faint though it was, its ethereal residue was uncannily similar to that of Azizla. Identical, in fact. For locations so far removed to share a single etheric signature is all but impossible. I conclude, therefore, that the Allegans created the floating continent with land taken from the burn. While that is a most intriguing theory, I fail to see what relevance it has to Dorma's defense. Aziz La was enclosed in a powerful energy barrier, impenetrable even to an agrius class battleship. It occurred to me that those ruins may have enjoyed similar protection. 
I have no proof. But the Warrior of Light did report seeing a structure resembling other known Allegan field generators. All right. But even if we could put up such an energy barrier, it surely wouldn't extend beyond the limits of the burn. So what's to stop the Garleans flying around it? Fuel. The Dalmascan capital, Rabanasta, was a key imperial refueling point in the east. By laying waste to it as a lesson to the rest, the empire greatly hindered its own operations in the region. If an imperial fleet were to advance upon Dorma, it would now have little choice but to travel, as the crow flies, over the burn. I see. A word of caution. Even assuming the generator still functions, raising a barrier of such a scale will require a prodigious amount of energy. And few places are so bereft of suitable crystals as the burn. Hmm, a source of energy. Tell me, did the Allegans make a habit of launching things into the sky? A curious question. Besides Aziz La, I know of only one other notable instance. The Red Moon Dalamud, whose fall triggered the calamity. Just the two occasions, you say? Then I believe I may have a solution to our energy problem. You do? I may. To find out for sure, we would need to visit the Azim Steppe. Which would, I now see, present the perfect opportunity to discuss an alliance with the Zayla tribes. <laughs> How very neat. What say you then? Shall we see whether this road leads? tire of this vista. The endless fields, the boundless skies. Tis a sight to make a man forget his cares. But not his purpose, I trust. Might this be a fitting moment to tell us what we are doing here? Of course. During my time with the Mole, I learned some few myths of this land. One goes thus. In the distant past, when all seemed doomed, a wayfaring soul came unto the steppe. Venturing into the northern crag, he received of Nama a sliver of her essence, a shard of the shining moon, and with it clove the tainted land from the earth. The end thus averted, to these fields did the wayfaring soul return, and venturing once more into the northern crag, he buried the shard, and made unto the heavens an offering of blood. A tainted land cloven from the earth and an offering of blood to the heavens, as is La and Dalamud. That was my thinking, yes. And you believe that yonder mountains hide an artifact possessed of sufficient power to raise Aziz La up to the heavens. I suppose that might suffice. Worth a closer look, would you say? I would.
Such an abundance of ether. Are we in luck? We are. This is an elegant artifact, most likely built to regulate the flow of ether. I strongly suspect the ancients used it to stem the flow from here to the burn. That would explain how they were able to untether what became Azizla from its surroundings. But were we to throw open the floodgates, the resultant deluge would surely be sufficient to raise our wall. And in restoring the flow, we may also restore life to the wasteland. Hmm. What is it? While the device itself harbors a surfeit of ether, the opposite is true of the surrounding area. An effect of regulation, perhaps. A similar phenomenon seemed to be occurring in Doma. Whatever the explanation, the answer will not reveal itself here. We have seen what we needed to see. Let us return to Mol Illo. What shall serve as well as any? I shall enjoy this, Han. Is this truly necessary? Have you no peaceable way of making decisions? Speak not of peace. You stand before proud warriors of the Dothal. In the heat of battle do our souls burn brightest. We lay low the strong that we may rise higher. That is our way, the way of might. There is no other. Oh, they did not want for conviction. <laughs> Indeed, it's what makes them such dangerous enemies and such useful allies. Enough talk, it is time to fight. Yes! Not since the Nardom has my soul burned so! Come! We have only just begun! Enough! You were not granted leave to set the step ablaze! Well, well, the sun has come out to play. Be gone, Moonstruck Oranir! I am busy! Fool of a Dothal! Have you forgotten the face of your master already? The sun will never set! From his seat on high, he reigns over all, now and forever. Yet what should he find here, but a battle to determine the fate of the steppe? A battle waged without his blessing. This will not stand. You, Doman! You who come to petition the warriors of this land, forget that all Nama's children are wards of the Oranir. 
As first among my brothers, your petition is mine alone to judge. <sighs> These words are as wind from a horse's backside. Plentiful, but your axe sings more sweetly. Let her speak for you. Your place! Forgive me, Brother Magni, but we have an arrangement with the Dothal. We will not abide any interruptions. <laughs> so be it. The sun will pass judgment on all. Didacool, join me. The sun is in good company. We may dance alone. Beg not for mercy, for you will have none. Bear witness to the power and the glory of Azim! Constantly at each other's throats like rabid dogs. Gods, I'm turning into her. <clears throat> I am not the patience for this, but if we must fight, let us at least be brief. Come. bliss in defeat. T'was a battle to burn soul and flesh to ash. We Dothal will lend you our strength as promised. Nama's power is yours to wield. What does the sun say to that? The sun is not driven by base motives such as yours. But I, they have been judged and found worthy. It is the way of the Oranir to accord recognition and respect to the strong. You have made sufficient proof of your strength. The sun shall answer your call. You have our thanks. We are glad to call you allies. You? By what are you called? You stole her. Why? Are you... Are you my Nama? I beg your pardon? In battle, you shone with all the majesty of the full moon's light. Your healing touch, the embodiment of the Dusk Mother's love.
Long had I wondered if my Nama might not be a woman of the steppe. Beholding you, I am all but certain. Now, look into my eyes. Could it be? Could you be? I am. Not interested, little son. Try again when you've become a man. Little? <laughs> little son! Little son! <laughs> <laughs> Does it pain you, little son? Crave you salve to soothe the ache? Fire to sear the wound in your heart? We have wasted enough time here. Siren awaits for word of our success. Did it work? It did. Ether may flow freely to the burn once more. Mistress Lys, Commander Aldin, it gives me great pleasure to formally welcome the city-state of Alamigo to the Eorzean Alliance. The pleasure is ours, Your Grace. I know I speak for all Alamegans when I say that we are glad of this chance to stand with our comrades of the Alliance. And we, for our part, are glad indeed to be able to welcome friends both old and new. Lord Hien of Dorma, at your service. Pray, accept my heartfelt thanks for your generous invitation. Nay, tis we who must thank you for journeying so far. And would be remiss of me not to acknowledge the part the Scions of the Seventh Dawn have played in bringing all of us together. In times of great unrest, you and yours have been our constant companions, without whom we would not be here. 
With apologies to Lord Hean and Mistress Alizé, it occurs to me that we have not gathered in this way since that fateful day in Uldar. The day I lost my arm and my freedom. As I lay in my cell, never did I dream that I would one day be given the chance to represent my homeland at this council. I would not even be alive had you not plucked me from the jaws of death. You, Yugiri, and Alfino. Would that the lad could be with us. I too owe my presence here to Alfino. In so many ways. Until such time as he returns, I mean to carry on his good work as best I can. Come, friends. Let us leave the past in the past and turn our eyes to the future. My Lord Hean, pray tell us how things stand in the East. Having heard the rumors of dissent in Garlemald, I dared to dream of a peaceable solution. Hmm. The Empire will not so easily change its ways. If the Garleans have a mind to take back Doma and Alamigo, we'll be hard-pressed to stop them, even with the might of Six Nations. But while we lack the strength to fight the tide, a course may yet present itself, if we read the winds aright. The winds suggest but one course to me. One which leads from the sea unto the river and thence to the source of all our woes. The Assians. Indeed. All here have felt their blighted touch. It was the bringers of chaos who nurtured the Archbishop's tyrannical ambitions. They who bestowed upon him the secrets of summoning, as they have so many others before and since. And while they remain, we shall know no peace. Our objective is clear. The question is how to achieve it. That our enemy parades about in Xenos's skin poses problems in itself, but ere we get to them, how are we to infiltrate the Empire and get close enough to strike? While I see the wisdom in targeting the Essians, an assassination attempt on Garlean soil would do little to aid our cause, even were it to succeed. It's time we used our enemy's preferred tactic, subterfuge. You have an idea? Speak your mind, Master Thancred. None here know the enemy better than the Scions, and you may have best of all. Whatever it is you propose, we will give it fair hearing. On that you have my word. Very well, Admiral. My proposal is thus. We dispatch the Shinobi to Imperial territory. There, they sow the rumor that the Crown Prince perished in the Battle for Alamigo, and that the man parading around is in fact a corpse inhabited by a Servant of Darkness. It does have the ring of truth about it. And were the Garleans to learn that their future ruler is a puppet, the Empire would be shaken to the core. But, at the risk of sounding stupid, would they actually believe such an unlikely story? I didn't. Ordinarily not. But prior to his miraculous recovery, rumors of Xenos' death had already begun to circulate around the Empire. Ultimately, however, what the masses believe is not our chief concern. 
Our true objective is to create an opening for rival factions within Garlemald to exploit. Just as a war of succession erupted in the wake of Empress Solus's death. A war which raged until but recently, plunging the Imperial House into disarray as nephew and uncle grappled for the throne. It is no coincidence that one of Varus's first acts as Emperor was to name Xenos heir apparent, family feuds being so tiresome when armies are involved. Not all welcomed his choice of successor, however. There is no shortage of individuals who aspire to the throne, who would jump at any chance to seize power. The news that Xenos is not only dead, but a puppet to diabolical forces, would be too enticing to ignore. The Empire would not be quick to recover from a second war of succession. I am no stranger to infiltrating Imperial territory. With a team of operatives gathered from among the Alliance's finest, the plan should have a reasonable chance of success. Dorma already has shinobi in place throughout the provinces. We stand ready to act, and act we must. What say you all? I'm for Master Thankry's proposal. We shine a light upon the ASEAN and test the Empire's unity. Twas his plot that scuttled Doma's negotiations, was it not? Why then, if we can eliminate him, there may yet be a chance for peace. Let us wage this war of subterfuge that we may one day lay down our arms. Gods know we never will while the Asians remain. That way. Sorrow. History must be changed. Ahead looms a calamity. Ahead looms light. Expunging all form and life. Twin dooms only you can forestall. Only you. What's the matter? There's... There's a voice! Spies in our midst? Nay, I sense no such presence. Let expanse contract, Eon become instant. Through wide the gates that we may pass. Is it over? Master Thancred! Twelve for Fend. Bear him to a private chamber. Have every healer make ready. Swiftly! Master Thancred remains in slumber. Though his vital signs appear stable, he's unresponsive. What could have done this? And, and why just him and not the others? I'm afraid we could not identify the cause, my lady. Our examinations revealed no wounds, nor the presence of any poisonous substances. Gods, that only makes it worse. You're to let us know the moment there's any change, all right?
Thank you for coming. Knowing Thancred, he would apologize for being otherwise engaged at so crucial a juncture. In gifting us a course of action, Thancred sowed the seed of all that is to follow. We have but to nurture it as best we can. To him, I would say, rest easy, that he may wake to enjoy the fruits of our labors. Now, the matter of the mysterious voice must not be forgotten. Will you tell me exactly what happened? Alizé and I heard a voice in the moments before Thancred collapsed. It was accompanied by a severe headache, as if something were clutching at our minds. Did you experience the same thing? So, in between the voice and the pain, you felt as if you were somewhere else entirely? Your testimony confirms my suspicion. That which you experienced was, I believe, your soul being plucked from your flesh. Called. Called? I myself examined Thancred. Reach out as I may. I could not sense in him the spark of life that is his soul. That Thancred alone was stricken so is likely due to his heightened sensitivity to the effects of ether, a consequence of his prior possession by the Assian La Hebrea. The owner of the voice, whoever it may be, reached out to you, called your souls, and in so doing, caused you and yours such pain. But if that's true, where exactly are we being called to? I know not. Yet one thing is plain. Whoever waits for you on the other side is possessed of a power unlike any I have ever known. Forgive us, Lise, but may we leave Thancred in your care for a time. As if you had to ask. I may not be a scion anymore, but I'm no less a friend. Don't worry. I'll see to it that Thancred's well looked after. Just focus on solving this mystery, all right? Thank you, Lise. As the Elder Seedseer says, Tis no ordinary individual we are dealing with, nor can we discount the possibility of Assian involvement. Whoever or whatever is behind this, the sooner we find out, the better. Gods, it's good to see you. Would that our meeting were under happier circumstances. I judged the voice sufficient cause for concern even before you sent word of its effect on our comrade. You heard it too, then? And all but certainly at the self-same instant. Alas, pained as I was, I could make little sense of what few words did then reach mine ears. Who do you think is responsible? Could this be the Assians doing? That I cannot say. Not when so little is known. 
Ere I indulge in speculation, I would examine Thancred with mine own eyes. To Alamigo, then, without further delay. One other thing. During my visit to the Far East, I observed a strange phenomenon. Thou referrest, I presume, to the localized reduction in etheric density. Well, that spares me the trouble of an explanation. Yes, I noted precisely that at two apparently unconnected locations. I take it the phenomenon is not limited to the Far East. Indeed not. Of late, our agents charged with surveilling the beast tribes have spoken of little else. In every corner of the realm, they tell of places in which the ether hath grown thin. Naturally, my suspicions first turned to primal activity, but the areas thus affected betray no evidence of summoning. I must confess to being quite perplexed. If the same phenomenon is being observed in multiple locations on opposite sides of the world, we may safely discount regional factors. Needless to say, this warrants further investigation. Indeed, I shall make it my task to... The voice... It calleth to me once more. I hear it too. Only you. Only you. Uh, no! Ishtola! Real J! Throw wide the gate. Yishtola! Orionje! Open your eyes! Open your eyes, I beg you! Say something! Anything! Not again. Please! Not again! Here he is, my lady. Gabu, it's been too long. I'm afraid there's been no change. If he can see or hear us, he has given no sign. I see. You're still fighting. I'm proud of you. We promised that we would come and visit you together, didn't we? Alphano and I. I'm sorry that we haven't managed that yet. You know, with the three of us like this, does it not remind you of that night? Of the stars beyond count twinkling in the heavens? 
I was feeling pretty low back then. Powerless. But I knew that my brother was close by if I needed him, and that the others would be waiting for me back at the Rising Stones. Not like now. I've seen my share of trouble since coming to Eorzea. Been reminded again and again of my limitations, of how little I can change about this world. And I've come to know the sorrow of parting all too well. But to have the people I hold dear struck down before my eyes and be powerless to help them, that that I cannot bear. And for that I am grateful. I don't know what I would do without you. Well, that's more than enough brooding for one day. Come on, we have friends to save. The Populares no longer present an obstacle. Now is the time to bring the Empire's might to bear. A word from your radiance is all it takes. But one word, and the Imperial Army will fall upon Alamigo as a pack of bloodthirsty wolves and tear that feeble nation apart. Despite the lengths I go to, an emissary playing the part of a fool. When first I took this face, I swore to use all of my knowledge, all of my power, to further the cause of the Empire. My deeds stand testament to my commitment. And with this adamant flesh at my disposal, I could destroy the Icon Slayer as easily as one might swat a fly. Why do you hesitate? <sighs> Our enemy is resourceful. Though victory is certain now, it will not remain so indefinitely. Deliberate if you must, but be quick about it. We'll speak again when you have unburdened yourself of doubt. Until then, I take my leave. Father. should be the one to sigh. I played my part to perfection. I had earned my rest, and then, thanks to La Habrea's crowning act of idiocy, our favorite emissary sees fit to summon me back. Elidibus was ever a warrior. 
a most tiresome trait, would you not agree? What? Have you no words for me either? No matter. I've long grown weary of this mummery. Now, my dearest grandson, let me remind you of your place in the simplest of terms. You do not make judgments, you administer them. Swiftly and to the letter. Naught else is your concern. Elidibus may be an insufferable bore, but he is no fool. His choices as emissary seldom err. If aught threatens the balance twixt light and dark, it falls to you to remove it. Be it by your own hands or by your armies, you have ample means at your disposal. That is why this empire exists, why I built it. Oh dear, have I touched a nerve? You always were an easy one to read. I pity you, I do. As they say, ignorance is bliss. And I know how much happier you would be not knowing the things you know. The Founding Father was an Assian, and he created the Empire solely for the purpose of sowing the seeds of chaos. Don't take it personally. I merely do my duty. To bring about a calamity requires no small amount of power, and there is no surer way to obtain such power than by collecting powerful pawns. To that end, I have labored long and hard, and I must say I am quite pleased with my handiwork. Paltry, though it seems, in comparison to Alec. You fiends are over fond of your own voices. Mark me, Asian. Man is the master of his own destiny. Ah. <sighs> Such a waste of time and energy, both yours and mine. Lest you forget you are emperor now. If you wish to spout drivel about man's destiny, save it for the masses. It will serve to give them a sense of purpose and you pliant pieces for the game. Oh, do stop sulking, boy. You of all people should understand. Ours is a struggle to restore both mankind and the world to their rightful state. Viewed thus, our goals are one and the same.
I'm glad you've come, though I'm afraid there's little in the way of good news. After you left, we reached out to both the Alchemist's Guild and Stillglade Fane and attempted all manner of treatments. But the results were always the same. Whatever the answer is, it's not alchemy or conjury. Why did it have to be Yishtola and Orianger and not me? Out of all of us, they are the ones who could feasibly have solved this puzzle. And Elfano's still missing. God, it's all going wrong. Where do we even start? A grave situation indeed. Might I be of some assistance? Kryle! I did not think you well enough to travel. When word reached me of the plight of our friends, I could not well stay away. As a fellow scion, not to mention your erstwhile mentor, this is one of those times you should feel free to call on me, regardless of my personal circumstances. I... yes, I should have thought of that. Thank you for coming, Kryle. We would welcome your insight. And I should be happy to provide it. Now, what's this I hear about Alphano heading into Imperial territory? That boy always did have some funny ideas. Do you remember the speech he gave when he was accepted to the studium? My life's goal is not less than the salvation of this star. <laughs> well, that particular grand pronouncement has been a source of great embarrassment to him, as you know. But, the fact of the matter is, he meant every word and has lived his life accordingly. Yes, he remains altruistic to a fault, but I'm worried he was too fixated on his goals to see the dangers, as has happened before. You needn't be so concerned. Though his values remain the same, Alphano is not the blinkered boy he once was. Slowly but surely his eyes have been opened, thanks to a certain someone. A certain someone whom he'd be mortified to learn had heard about his little speech. Mum's the word, eh? Right, I'd better have a look at our patients. They're in the infirmary, I assume. I'll need absolute quiet, so it would be best if I did this alone. If you'll excuse me. All three are in fine physical health. At a glance, I would say they were merely sound asleep. Except for the fact that I couldn't sense the slightest trace of them in their bodies. It's as if their souls have taken leave of their physical forms. Ah, yes. The Elder Seed Seer made a similar observation. I've read the report. When you heard this mysterious voice, you described feeling as if you were somewhere else, yes? If we assume the ether which comprises your essence is being drawn to some other place, then it may be possible to follow the trail it leaves behind, just as we did in our search for Thancred. I wasn't around for that, but I can't imagine it was easy. Oh, it wasn't. But that's no reason not to try. I will have need of Master Matoya's crystal eye if I'm even to make the attempt. So, I suggest we pay her a visit.
come to disturb my peace again, have you? I hide myself away in a cave, and still you people insist on pestering me with your problems. Oh, I mistook you for your mochi's name, but I see now you're the sister. Weren't you supposed to be the lively one? I've seen happier faces at a rain sodden burial. Well, I'm sorry to dash your expectations, but the situation isn't exactly conducive to gaiety. Ha! That's more like it. Stoller used to spit and hiss like a wildcat, too. Better for a young thing like you to be filled with fire and leave the doom and gloom to your elders. Now, what exactly does this tragic situation of yours have to do with me? If I may, Master Matoya, we have need of your crystal eye once more. Stola is one of the afflicted, is she? Very well. She may be an ungrateful stray, but she's my ungrateful stray, and I'll not see her buried before I am. Right. Let us see what we can see. I'll begin from where our friends first fell, and cast my senses out from there. What is it? Did you find them? This, this, this doesn't make sense. How is it even possible? How is what possible? Kryle, what did you see? The, the threads, they just... they just ended. And, and no, I didn't lose track of them. I followed them as far as they went. It's as if... It's as if they were cut off. Could the ether have dissipated if it had? Oh, oh God! Their bodies are just husks. It's like the broodmother's daughter all over again. No, no, th this is different. The Kalyana girl was already dead, body and soul, when Lakshmi affected her resurrection. Aye, let's not jump to conclusions. If their physical forms yet breathe, and show no signs of wasting, then it follows that their souls must still be intact somewhere. But where? That's the question, isn't it, girl? Death has not taken them to the ethereal sea, yet there are no tracks left for us to follow. We're no closer to an answer than when we started. But knowing their souls are still out there is progress of a sort. We just have to keep looking. Pray, excuse me a moment. Yes? I remember, but... What, to Alamigo? We're on our way. 
That was Lee's. Apparently, a group of Popularis have defected to Alamigo, and Maxima, the envoy Alphano left with, is one of them. I'm sorry. I realize we've barely begun here, but... Go, child, go! You've made up your mind, and life's too short for dithering. I'll do some digging in the meantime, and see if there isn't some other method we could use to continue the search. Let's be off, then. Oh, not again! The enchantment barely seems to take these days. I chalk it up to old age, but I rather doubt it's that simple. Before they took ill, Yishtola and Urianger were sharing notes on a thinning of the ether. It seems to be happening all over. Does it now? And here I was, all set to blame my woes on that creaking mountain of refuse clogging up the valley egg. I fear something has gone awry. Still, there's naught to be gained from starting at shadows. You can only do what can be done, and that but one thing at a time. I'm sorry to drag you halfway across the realm, but when Maxima mentioned Alphano, I thought you'd want to hear the news in person. Ah, we meet again. Though I was hoping our reunion would be under more auspicious circumstances. What happened to my brother? Where is Alphano? Never fear, my lady. Your brother was in fine health when I took my leave of him, and I have no reason to assume that has changed. You assume? If you will allow me, I shall endeavor to explain events. Our troubles began not long after we departed Doma. While crossing the burn, we were fired upon by the Emperor's personal guard and forced to make an emergency landing. As we stumbled from the wreckage, our attackers fell upon us again, and we would have perished there and then were it not for the intercession of a third party, a band of mercenaries whose leader claimed to pursue a vendetta against the Assians. This Shadow Hunter, as he styled himself, then escorted us out of the wastes to relative safety. Upon arriving back in civilization, I gathered my Popularis colleagues and prepared to flee the Empire. Master Alphano, however, declined the invitation to join us, preferring to continue his investigation into the Assian threat. Well, at least he's not lying in a heap in the burn. Tell us more about these Assian hunters. Who are they? And is Alphano still with them? He is. As to who they are, I'm afraid I have nothing to tell you. Beyond the fact that they root out and destroy Assians, they were unwilling to divulge anything which might serve to identify them. They would not even reveal their next destination. But Master Alphino asked to accompany them all the same. Since parting company with your brother, we've been engaged in a game of cat and mouse with the Emperor's guard. We made our way through province after province, finding the army busy restoring order wherever we went, until we finally arrived here in Alamigo. 
I cannot thank Commander Aldin enough for giving us such an unexpectedly warm welcome. I'm not inclined to turn away refugees, no matter which land they call home. And if they can tell me how things lie in Garlemald, all the better. On that subject, there is much I would tell you. During the course of our journey, we heard tales that an entire rebel army had been slaughtered in the space of a single night. It would seem my former comrades grew tired of putting down uprisings in the conventional manner, and chose instead to bring a formidable new weapon to bear. Details were sparse, but the rumor alone was enough to dampen the flames of rebellion. I have also heard reports that several companies have withdrawn from their designated provinces and begun marching westward. It is my assessment that the Empire's forces are mobilizing for a large-scale military engagement. Westward? You mean they're getting ready to invade Alamigo? We knew this was coming, but not that it would be so soon. We've barely even begun to shore up our defenses. They won't stop an invading army. No, they won't. Dispatch messengers to the Alliance leadership requesting reinforcements, and send word to our officers in the field to hasten completion of those border fortifications. Prepare to meet the Imperials, head on! No matter how quickly we act, we still want for time. When the enemy comes into view, our best recourse will be to open negotiations with their commander, and see that the ensuing proceedings take as long as possible. Would you and Alize head to Doma and let Lord Hier know about this? I'm sure he'll want to hear about Alphino too. Consider it done. We'll send word when... Untold sorrow must be changed. Ahead looms a calamity. Eon become instant. Throw wide the gates! Oh. You heard it too. Well, at least we're both still standing. Oh, thank the gods. I thought we'd lost you for a moment there. Why does this keep happening? I wish I knew. Nothing we've tried has brought us any closer to an answer. We'll keep working on it. But first, we need to go and see Lord Hien. Seems the engineers have matters well in hand. Should the barrier work as we intend, Doma will be free to reinforce her allies in Alamigo without fear of weakening her own borders. Honored friends, the time has come to put your hard work to the test. Start the generator. Node 1 is operational. Nodes 2 to 8 are reporting similar energy levels. The barrier is forming. One thousand yams. Two thousand. 
3,000. Expansion remains smooth. No fluctuations detected. Four thousand. Five thousand. Target altitude reached. The barrier is holding steady at five thousand yards. We've done it. Is that an Imperial airship? Of all the rotten timing. But this is a gift, Mistress Alizé. They can test our new wall for us. Seems solid enough, though I was hoping for a fireball. By the gods, it's Alpha No. What are you? Let me go! He has my brother! Lower the barrier! Be at ease, girl. The lad is not dead, merely locked in slumber. No, not him too. We could identify no cause and found no remedy. Thus I sought to return him to Doma, and into the arms of Lord Heen himself, it would seem. It is a day for fated reunions. Would you not agree, adventurer? Or should I address you as the Warrior of Light? Gaius van Baelsar, the Black Wolf. That was the title I was given, one I have long since relinquished. Stand down. The Legatus of the 14th Imperial Legion died in Castrum Meridianum. I am no more than Gaius Baelsar, a man without rank or allegiance. Impossible. There's no way you could have survived. Do you remember how it unfolded? How I was deceived by La Habrea? How I was convinced that reviving the Ultima weapon would allow me to bring peace to Eorzea? The Essian used me, as he used so many others, all to further the restoration of his wretched god. Yet even with the might of Alec at my command, you bested me. And as the Praetorium went up in flames, I was content to burn along with it. For a moment, at least. A moment of folly. To surrender my life thus would have been to betray all who died for my cause. It was for them that I dragged myself free of the rubble and swore vengeance on the Assians.
The Black Wolf has shed his pelt, never to return to Garlemald or her legions. I live now only to exact revenge. My principal quarry was to be La Hebrea, whom I gather you have since ushered unto oblivion. But so many more remain, long as their kind lurked in the shadows, laboring to sow chaos throughout our world. I would see each and every one dragged into the light and put to the sword. Are the Scions not of like mind? In this single respect, perhaps. Then I shall continue the partnership the boy began, and share what intelligence I have acquired. Among the Asians, the black-masked ilk are subordinate to those who wear red. This you already know. Yet among the red there exists a hierarchy. Those set adrift with the shards clearly stand below those still joined to the source. Nabriales, who once dared to intrude upon the rising stones, belonged to the former group. And while he was indeed a dangerous foe, his powers were inconsequential next to the paragons of the source. The first was La Hebrea, who plagues us no more. There is also the white-robed Elidibus, and the elusive Emmet Selk, about whom little is known. We have files on La Habrea and Elidibus, but I believe this Emmet Selk is new to us? As I assume my brother told you, we have evidence to suggest that an Asian now walks in the body of the Crown Prince. Have you identified this interloper? Elidibus seems the most likely culprit. As emissary, it is his role to maintain the equilibrium between darkness and light. Your many deeds in Heidelin's name have upset the balance, and I believe he seeks to restore it by throwing his considerable power behind the Empire. As a leader of the Asians, he is one of our primary targets. It was on the trail of this very prey that the boy and I came across the scene of a failed uprising. In the absence of a single Galian casualty, we inspected the bodies of the rebels, and the lack of any external injury drew my immediate attention. They had been slain by Black Rose, an alchemical invention of the Imperial Army. When I yet served as Legatus, I ordered its production halted, and all stockpiles destroyed. Toxic gas is not a tool of conquest, but of extermination. Toxic gas? This must be the new weapon Maxima warned us about. Something deadly enough to sweep away all resistance in a matter of hours. Gods, you don't think they're planning to use this in Alamigo, do you? Put your fears to rest. We infiltrated the production facility and destroyed all existing stores of the chemical along with the plant itself. Even should they rebuild the operation, they will not soon manufacture another batch. Regardless, I would draw your attention to a directive we discovered in the plant's records. The document was marked with a recent date and authorized with the signature of one Zeno C. A. Galvas. A dead man signing the death warrant for thousands. Tis bad comedy. But the tale does not end there. Within that same facility was a chamber filled with devices of elegant design. Cloning technology, we realized. And what should we find in each and every incubator? But a young Emperor Solus.
All of which prompts the question, were the Asians responsible for these abominations, or was it the will of the Emperor? I must know which hand guides the Empire. Though I have given up my rank, I am yet a son of Garlemald, and I will fight for the future of my homeland. It is time I return to the Hunting of Shadows. We should focus on our common foe. To reopen old quarrels now would serve no purpose. You saved my brother's life, so I'm willing to let sleeping dogs lie. But in truth, it's not my decision to make. There was a time when I scorned those who placed their faith in false gods, even as I, in my blinkered conviction, placed mine in Asian promises. Unlike yours, my strength of will and my restraint was found wanting. We shall meet again, warrior of light. So that was the infamous Black Wolf, an unexpected ally to say the least. Well, I am content to leave the fine tuning of the barrier to cleverer minds. Let us bid our friends from the Ironworks farewell and see what can be done for Alphino back in Dorma. Our supplies of Black Rose have been ruined, but the new plant is already under construction. We should have the first batch ready in time for the offensive, Your Radiance. See that you do. Ah, yes, the infamous Black Rose. If I recall correctly, Gaius did not much care for the invention. A ruthless and indiscriminate weapon indeed, this airborne poison. It seems you are capable of making decisions worthy of your bloodline. With no gift for sorcery, we Garleans must look to Magitek to even the odds. If it spares the needless deaths of our soldiers and serves the cause of this empire, there is no method I would not employ. How very noble of you. Truly, though, I must commend you for embracing your role as Emperor. You play the part of the determined ruler well. Sometimes even I catch myself believing. A silent agent of death. Now that I think on it, Black Rose may well possess the perfect aspect. Slowly but surely, the deluge of light has worked upon the ether here in the source, and the gas should be most susceptible to its influence. Well, I shall leave you to your own devices. Go forth and bloody the land with your grand and glorious war. While you do what, precisely?
Need you ask? I will be doing what all Asians do. I am well aware that your kind exists only to usher in the next calamity. But you seem oblivious to the harm your singular agenda causes to the Empire. You cannot have forgotten the events which followed your mortal demise. Our homeland was plunged into civil war for your failure to name a successor. The edifice you so carefully constructed was but a hair's breadth from collapse. Are you truly so naive? You thought me oblivious to the consequences of a departure so painstakingly timed? It was by design? Well, of course it was. Though I will admit the resulting panic exceeded even my wildest expectations. But how can you be surprised? Throwing the world into disarray was the very purpose for which this nation was, as you say, so carefully constructed. Now, if you have no further questions, I must be on my way. Since we may not meet again in this lifetime, it would be remiss of me not to offer a word or two of gratitude. I really must thank you for this surplus of vessels. I can mold any host into my own image, but having bodies tailor-made for me in this fashion is so much less tiresome. You dabbled in elegant cloning techniques, yes? It certainly is a compelling, not to mention entertaining, field of research. And of all the options available, you chose the Founding Father on whom to experiment. You have a twisted streak to you, Varus. Like grandsire, like grandson, hey? If events play out as planned, this will become something of a family enterprise. You will be the capstone of this world, I the anchor and shard, and together we will give the lie to this star's fraudulent existence. Welcome back, you two. Greetings, Lord Here. Glad you could join us. Glad to be here. I would have come sooner, were our own defense is not in question, but I am pleased to report that our soldiers are assembling for deployment to Alamigo as we speak. We're grateful for your support. Thanks to the efforts of our allies, it won't be long before we've established defensive positions on this front as well. I have some good news, too. Elfano has come back to us. As for the bad news... So, Alphano won't wake up, Gaius van Baelsar is alive and hunting Asians, and the Empire is planning to poison us all with toxic gas. Does that sound about right? Ordinarily, any one of those things would have left me in shock. But the way things have been lately, 
It's all starting to seem pretty normal. Getting back to your report, are we sure this Black Rose is the weapon Maxima was talking about? It fits the description. And it seems we have Alfino to thank for sparing us an early demonstration of its effectiveness. I have a feeling this won't be the last time his bravery in the Empire will serve us here in Eorzea. The threat of an unknown weapon has had us all on edge. But now that we know what we're dealing with, we can take steps to defend against it. As for Gaius, I'm not sure what to think. Am I happy he's alive? Not in the slightest. Am I happy he's hunting Asians? Aye, I'd have to say I am. Oh, speaking of Garlians you didn't expect to see, we have a tale of our own, as it happens. When we sent envoys to the Imperial Army to request talks, they returned with the message that Varis Sos Galvus would be attending. The Emperor himself? Well, Varus did sanction the Popularis peace mission. But knowing that an Asian walks in his son's skin, I do not see how we can trust him or anyone from that nest of vipers. The Alliance would proceed with negotiations regardless, if only to give ourselves more time to prepare. We do, however, require your cooperation. Ah, uh, right. Yes. So, as a condition for the talks to go forward, the Empire has requested that a member of the Scions be present. There'll be a representative from each Alliance nation, of course, but I'm afraid we have to ask that you come along too. God, Lise! You know how much I hate politics! But then, what choice do I have? Alphano and the others aren't going to do it. Very well. I shall attend as the Scion's representative. In case you're wondering why I didn't ask you, the Empire also requested the presence of Eorzea's champion. Oh, you're not, are you? Come on, if Alizé can put on a brave face, then so can you. Now, we don't know what Varys means to bring to the table, or why he wants you there, but having you close at hand should make all the difference. The meeting will take place on the border. Anticipating an early assault, we mean to position the bulk of our forces nearby. The Alliance leaders should already be on their way. Once you're ready, we can head out and join them. Esteemed representatives of the Eorzean Alliance. On behalf of the Galian Empire, I thank you for inviting me here today. As this parley was convened at your request, I invite you to speak first. Very well, your radiance. I, Nanimo Ulnamo, 17th in the line of Ul, should be pleased to oblige you. As recent events in Alamigo and Doma have made plain, 
the subjugation and exploitation of neighboring nations is not a sustainable policy. Should this day end in war, you may very well defeat us, but you will never extinguish the people's desire for freedom. Though it may not be in our lifetime, there will be another revolution, another war, and the cycle will continue. Doma has entered into a concord with the nations of Eorzea, a partnership wherein we recognize one another as equals. Garlemald could be afforded similar treatment. You need only set aside your ambitions and join us in paving a path towards peace. <laughs> you will not win me over with sophistry, Your Grace. As you know only too well, this alliance lacks the strength to keep the peace within its own borders. Even now, your struggles with the Beastmen continue unabated. Divided, you sow this fertile soil with the seeds of your differences and reap naught but discord and chaos for your trouble. Eorzea must be united under one leader one purpose. I would offer you both and bring an end to your strife. With all due respect, your radiance, the only thing that you offered the people of Alamigo was fear and hopelessness. The citizens of Dorma can also attest to the meager arms of imperial rule. There is no purpose to be found in a life of oppression each day more uncertain than the last. Our people are willing to die for their freedom. A great many already have, and countless more will, if we don't put an end to this madness here and now. We brought order and stability to your lives. This madness and bloodshed is of your own making. You broke the peace, not Garlemald. Peace? Order? You kill our peoples, despoil our lands, take everything that is ours. And what? You expect us to lick the boot that grinds our faces into the dirt? I expect you to weigh the costs. To recognize that countless lives have been lost on both sides in pursuit of a greater good, and to not squander all we have achieved in a fit of petulance. Your Radiance. I fear I can personally attest to the dangers of pursuing one's vision with such righteous fervor. For a thousand years, the Holy See of Ishgard waged war with dragons. A thousand years of sacrifice, of sorrow and hate, in which we bathed in the blood of friend and foe alike. Had it gone on any longer, we may well have drowned. Yet we have chosen to raise ourselves out of this bloody spiral and have since made peace with our former enemy. So I understand. No doubt the dragons were more receptive to your overtures in the wake of their leader's demise. You speak of peace, yet use war to achieve it. Your father would not have bothered to obscure his intent with honeyed words. He understood that strength is all that matters in the end.
Without his clarity of vision, I can but wonder what will become of Ishgard and her people. There was a time when Galamal too lacked a leader of conviction. Weak and unable to wield magic, we were at the mercy of the strong from whom we sought refuge in the bitter cold of the north. Were it not for the discovery of Ceruleum and the subsequent development of Magitech, we might never have gained the power to take back that which was rightfully ours. You speak as if your people were the first to have been driven from their homes. Limsa Laminsa was built by wayward souls in search of a place to call their own. On the shores of Vilbrand we found it, and from those humble beginnings did we grow and flourish, and all without robbing our neighbours of their liberty. So saith the pirate. Am I to believe that you simply asked the kobolds to yield up their lands and that they were happy to oblige you? that you did not drive them out like rats in the hold of one of the many ships seized by your privateers. I will concede that after centuries of exile, reclamation may be mistaken for invasion. Nevertheless, it is not. And those who till stolen soil have no right to object when cast out in turn. Your uncompromising nature rivals that of the Ixal. They too lament circumstances which they themselves perpetuate. Were they but to embrace peace, we would welcome them with open arms. Indeed, some few have done just that, and now receive of the Twelve's Woods bounty. Would that your people might learn from their example. <laughs> you dare compare us to the Birdmen? You who thought to invoke the Twelve and threaten all of creation? I came here in the hope of finding some speck of common ground, but I see now these discussions will accomplish nothing. Despite what you people may believe, I am not wont to choose the sword over the olive branch. Tis but a pity men are loath to accept one without first being shown the other. Wait! I beg you! This meeting was supposed to be a chance to find a way forward together, not to bemoan the missteps which brought us here. Please, if you truly consider violence a last resort, there must be a way we can come to an agreement. As Mistress Alizé says, we did not come here to bicker over the past, but to discuss how we might strive towards a brighter future. Emperor Varys, may I suggest a short recess, that all present might compose themselves prior to beginning anew? Very well. I pray this intermission will suffice to move these talks in a more constructive direction. Now then, who would have the floor? Before we resume, I wish to offer you an apology. 
After you graciously accepted our invitation to discuss an armistice, we have done naught but rebuke you at every opportunity. I believe I speak for all of us when I say we are deeply sorry for our discourtesy. I'll admit your familiarity with our affair surprised me and served to remind me how little I know of yours. I think all here can understand the desire to reclaim one's homeland, but why expand further? That is my question. If I may, the answer can be found in the Imperial Doctrine they took great pains to impart to my people. Recognizing the threat icons posed to the world, Solus Zos Galvus decreed that they were to be eradicated. To this end, he began a campaign to unite all lands under the Garlean banner. Or so we were taught. Yet the Emperor only reached the burn, the Baron said to have been laid waste by icons, after conquering all the lands that lay between. What is more, I am quite certain the practice of summoning was not nearly so widespread in the days before the Empire's founding. When you put it like that, it all starts to sound like an excuse, doesn't it? But to distract from what? Why are you really waging this war? Finally, you ask the right question. I can but hope you heed mine answer and at last accept the righteousness of our cause. My goal is this, to return the world to the way it once was, the way it was always meant to be. In doing so, mankind will be made whole once more. No longer will we suffer from the dissension born of our differences. There will be but one race, a perfect race, as we were when time began. What in Rolga's name are you talking about? I am talking about the origins of this star, of the source and its 13 reflections. At the instant of the great sundering, t'was not only the world that was shattered, but mankind itself. Thus were we divided into myriad races, each with its own unique imperfections. That is why man looks upon his neighbor and feels fear and hatred, why he wages war, why he kills his brother. You all, in your own way, have proven as much today. The peace you seek is but a fleeting solution to a fundamental problem. One which calls for more drastic measures. To bring about everlasting peace, our worlds must be rejoined. is the goal the Empire would see realized, the glorious future unto which we shall one day shepherd mankind. A rejoining of worlds. I have heard this tale of the source and its reflections before. Are these not the self-same desires as the Asians? Emperor Varys, do not trust in their words. They will lead you to your doom. My father thought to use them, but in the end he succumbed to their temptations. He embraced summoning like so many other pawns before him. Do not tell us you mean to do the same. Ha 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 ha. 
to be a pawn, free from the burden of choice would be a blessing. But I forswore that privilege the day I learned that the Galian Empire was built by the hand of an Asian. What? Yes. My grandsire, the former emperor, is of their number. And who better to build an empire capable of bringing about the calamitous change we desire? Would you condemn me for this alliance, for bowing to the will of these shadowy masters, when the prize is true and lasting peace? I come not to conquer, but to liberate, to free man from the prison of divergence. Imagine a world united, one perfect race beneath a single standard. An army before whose might these servants of darkness and light would fly as leaves in a storm, never again to meddle in man's affairs. We would be the masters of our own fate. I bid you join me, not as subjects of Garlemald, but of a new nation. And together we shall win freedom for ourselves and generations yet unborn. You want to trigger another half dozen calamities? You can't be serious! Have you forgotten how many died? There will be no one left! Do you truly imagine we would aid you in your bloodletting? It is unthinkable! Unconscionable! And what is the alternative? To be as cattle waiting for slaughter? I would have us work together that we might take fate into our own hands! Into your hands, perhaps? But what of the other worlds, your radiance? With every calamity, you obliterate a star and every soul that dwells on it. the Asians, we are all but tiny, momentary specks within an indifferent universe. We cannot hope to oppose them until we have been made whole once more. Are these truly the words of Garlemald's ruler? The flaws and foibles which you so abhor are what make us who we are. Every nation, even yours, Emperor Varys, is made whole through the combination of these imperfections, the strengths of one compensating for the weaknesses of another. While it is true that man succumbs all too often to anger and avarice, he may yet overcome his baser instincts through the forming of bonds with others, fostering community and cooperation. That the protector of an empire should not only reject these fundamental truths, but seek to change them at so dear a cost to life is indefensible. Such a man is not fit to govern. And you, warrior of light, would you refuse me as well?
It would seem the Alliance is of one mind on this matter. You Eorzeans never cease to disappoint me. Though I suppose I have only myself to blame for expecting more from savages. This discussion is at an end. I bid you make ready for our next meeting. It will not be at the negotiating table. I'm not sure what I was expecting from our meeting with the Emperor, but it wasn't that. Still, at least we know now what he's really after. Aye, a future built on a mountain of bodies. I too want the Asians dead, but not at any cost. The last of the reinforcements from Dorma arrived not long ago. I pray it will be enough. Given the Emperor's stated goal, this is a battle we can ill afford to lose. If the Galleons come in force, we may not have much say in the matter, even with our combined strength. We knew from the first that the odds would be against us. But if there is even the slightest chance of victory, we must do everything in our power to seize it. We must seize it, full stop. Here, here. The two of you are to join an irregular unit and support the main host. I won't bother asking if you're minded to fight. After coming this far, how could I not? And for once, there's no one around to countermand me. Not that they would. Not even my brother. But we all know who really make the difference. Ready to frighten some Garleans? I wouldn't want to be on their side. Might I ask you to accompany the Dorman contingent? They are strangers here, and your presence would do much to raise their spirits. We would be honored. When our people stride out with you in their midst, I dare say the Eorzeans will feel an ilm taller themselves. High spirits have a way of spreading. Ah, uh, what I wouldn't give to join you. But my duties as field commander will not allow it. I'll leave the front lines in your capable hands. Comrades, ready your arms. The hour of battle has come. May the crystal guide us to victory! Since the others couldn't be here, we'll have to fight twice as hard. If Alphano wakes to find the Imperials have won, I shall never hear the end of it. It's strange. I thought I would be terrified when the fighting started. 
I should be terrified. But with you at our side, I can't help feeling everything is going to be all right. So please, don't you dare leave me alone. No matter what happens, we have to survive together. There you are, and none the worse for wear. Indeed. I had hoped we might do more to help, but there seems to be no one left to fight. A tactical withdrawal, perhaps? We should give chase. Finish them off while we have the chance. Imagine the other surprise when they wake to find the war already won. The light will expunge all life. Only you can forestall the calamity. Throw wide the gates. No! 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 Not like... Oh no, don't tell me. Are you all right? Quickly, we must get her back to the encampment. There have been several skirmishes along the border, but as yet, neither side has delivered a decisive blow. We had long assumed that the Garleans would overwhelm us in a straight fight, but we seem to be gaining ground, albeit slowly. As to why that might be, the most likely explanation is that they have yet to commit all their forces. Still, we're winning, and our latest intelligence suggests the Emperor has retreated back to Garlemald. In light of this, we're considering launching an offensive with the aim of pushing the front line forward and giving ourselves some room to breathe. Commander! The Imperials! They've broken through our defenses to the east! What? Our scouts say their forces are being led by Lord Xenos. Lord Heian and Commander Hext have taken their troops to provide support, but we don't know how long they can hold out. So, they've been biding their time, waiting for his arrival, have they? Very well. Send word to our allies, requesting reinforcements for the front line. Should the worst come to the worst, I may need to enter the fray myself. But what of you? Do you still have the strength to fight? Much obliged. Given the choice, I'd take you over a hundred soldiers. Please, I beg. 
bit you open? What's wrong? Is it the voice again? Are you sure you're in a fit state to do this? May Ralga grant us strength. Give them hell, lass. I, for my part, will defend this place to my dying breath. Magic? With a Garlean body? That's hardly fair. Still, he must be stopped, no matter the cost. been too long. No words to mark our reunion? <laughs> so be it. Equilibrium must be restored, and only your death will redress the balance. Your mother chose her champion well. Yet, for all your strength, you will still fail. Thank you. 
At last, I found you. Please, there's no cause for alarm. Though, I confess, this is not where I had intended to meet. But the place of our meeting is of no consequence, like the war you wage. Win or lose, the path you walk leads only to oblivion. The better path leads you here, to me. I have need of your strength. I'm afraid such questions will have to wait. We have precious little time, and your work is not yet done. Go to the Crystal Tower. I have left something for you near its base. It will serve as a beacon of sorts, one which I pray will help you on your journey. All you need do is find it. I will take care of the rest. Soon, we will throw wide the gates. And the path to the first will be yours to walk at last. You're awake, thank heavens. Do you recall the confrontation with Xenos? You were the first to come to the aid of Mistress Lise and the others on the front line. In the midst of your duel, it is said you faltered and that the Crown Prince seized the opportunity to deliver a mortal blow. Yet before his blade could find its mark, he was distracted by the arrival of a second adversary who bore you away from the battlefield and into the hands of our chirurgeons. Lest you wonder, he left before you awoke as is his wont. Estinian never was one for emotional farewells. Though Zeno bested all before him, the battle clearly took its toll, for he retreated shortly after your rescue. Seeing this, the remaining Imperial forces decided discretion was the better part of valor and pulled back, allowing us to re-establish our position. 
We have since received word of renewed unrest in the provinces, doubtless inspired by the efforts of the Eorzean Alliance and our Far Eastern allies. Nor does the good news end there. We have also come into possession of intelligence suggesting unrest within the Imperial Court. This would certainly explain why both the Emperor and Lord Zenos appear to have abandoned the fight. A long-awaited ray of hope in these dark times. Yet to awake, I'm afraid. But please, concentrate on your own recovery for now. You have carried the hopes of some half-dozen nations, and we are all eternally grateful for your efforts. But no one is without their limits, not even you. Leave this fight to us, my friend. You have earned your rest. Ah, but before I forget, I was asked to deliver a message as soon as you awoke. A reminder that you are not alone, though many of your allies have fallen. When you are well and rested, you are to return home, where friends will be waiting for you. Now, if you will excuse me, I must return to the front. May we meet again soon, under happier circumstances. I rushed back as soon as I could. I swear, my heart nearly stopped when I heard you'd collapse like the others. What in heaven's name is going on? Win or lose, the path you walk leads only to oblivion. Oh, well, that's helpful. And what else did he say? The better path leads to him? Hmm... <gasps> if his is the voice you've all been hearing, perhaps the others are with him! Sir Emmerich said the fighting had reached a stalemate, didn't he? But if that monster masquerading as Xenos comes back? Thancred, Yostola, Uriange, Alphano, Alize, you're going to need all of them on your side to defeat him. And I forbid you from going to face him on your own, do you hear me? So if you must leave, go and find the others. Bring them home. Oh, 
As for where to start, you said the stranger had left a beacon for you at the Crystal Tower, right? But I'm sure I remember hearing that the tower was blocked off. There has to be a way. If anyone would know, it's Sid and the researchers of St. Koinak's find. Don't you worry, we'll find that beacon for you. I pray you have good reason for abandoning the front. How could I remain there while the rumor that my son is possessed by a demon spreads like a sickness here at home? I will not be made to fight for the throne a second time. But what of you? Did you not tell me you would destroy Eorzea's champion with the ease that one might swat a fly? A minor setback. She will not escape me again. Where is your grandsire? I would have word with him. How should I know? Do you hide from each other's sight as well? I imagine he's doing what all Asians do. Hmm. He must have found a way to take advantage of this turmoil. Men are not pawns to be played with, Asian. You underestimate us at your peril. This war will not be decided by you and yours. Man must choose his own fate, and I, for my part, will do all within my power to see Garlemald emerge victorious. Pray forgive the intrusion, Your Radiance, but the requested preparations are now complete. We stand ready to begin production of Black Rose upon your order. Bloody savages! A pity your hunt leads you elsewhere. Not that I am surprised. 
May you find joy in it. Grow stronger, more savage, and savor every triumph. In the meantime, I will reclaim that which is rightfully mine. <laughs>